follow YouTube. I, I normally wouldn't uh, do a video like this. <coughs> but I think this kind of warrants it to kind of let you guys know what I'm dealing with. Shannon wanted me to call her last night. Uh, she sent me a text after I was in bed. Because, you know, she knows what time I go to bed. She knows I like to be in bed by 9. So she waits until after I'm in bed and sends me a text. Call me, please. Or whatever she said. Call me. Whatever. So I didn't get it until this morning. And I'm like, I'm not calling you. 5.30 in the morning. Sorry. Not going. I sh Maybe I should have. <coughs> Some work all day. And no text from her. No text from her. No text from her. Around 2.30, I decided to text an old friend of mine. Just, it was work-related, so I sent him a text, and it wouldn't go through. So I was like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot to charge my phone. I forgot to put time on my phone. So I put time on my phone, and then sent him a text. Problems. I'm kind of thinking, now. Nah, that's probably why I haven't gotten a text all day. Probably because my phone's been off. Would make sense. So, anyway, I go pick my daughter up, and I, I figured since I didn't call Shannon last night, that she would probably tell daycare this morning that I wasn't picked right one up. So I decided to record it. All right, it's Monday. I think August 20th or 21st. I'm not 100 sure. 20th. Guess I can look. I got a phone right here. Yep, August 20th. About 15, 24 hours. Uh, forgot to uh, put time on my phone last night. So Shannon hasn't been able to contact me all day. And I'm standing on, you know, trying to pick my daughter up as usual. As I usually do. And I kind of have a feeling that she's told daycare that I'm not allowed to get her because uh, she hasn't been able to contact me. So, uh, we're going to record this, just in case that's the catch. Just in case that's the catch. So, anyway, I get there, and uh, they're taking the kids out to the playground. Yeah. And, and Brevin's teacher just walks her right past me, doesn't even acknowledge that I'm there. And of course, around this time, as they're starting to come up the stairs, my, uh, a friend of mine from work calls me. So I take the call. And I figured, you know, well, maybe, you know, maybe that's why she just kind of ignored me because she saw I was on the phone or something, whatever. <laughs> so I finished that call. I get work for that. So I finished that call. And I walk out, and the kids are playing on the playground. I mean, you just marched my daughter right past me. My daughter didn't even say hi to me or nothing. So I'm figuring she's, you know, probably been told that I'm not allowed to pick her up. That she's not allowed to come here. So. I stand there at the edge of the playground, kind of looking at the teacher, like, you know, you gonna say anything? You gonna tell me? Nah. Nah, doesn't say a word. And of course, you know, I had to hurry up and turn my recorder back on because my buddy from work kind of turned it off when he called me. So, I'm standing there, standing there and turn around and see the, the proprietor of the daycare. And I say, am I allowed to walk onto the playground? Play this crap so just because she, I wouldn't call her last night. So that's I understand it. you're doing your job. Yeah. And, uh, she, Sorry. No, you're not your problem. It's not your fault. So the lady says, I'm on the phone with Shannon right now, and she says, she, I, I had a note from her this morning that you're not to pick Rylan up. I think I hit it myself fairly well. I kind of expected this. Because Shannon pulled this crap before last year. And then you know, and then, of course, Shannon sends me a text. I did not know if you planned on picking Brown up at daycare or not. I told them I would pick her up because I wasn't able to get a hold of you. No, you told them that she's not to go with me. All right? That's real simple. Now, here you got my daughter that is walking right past me, ignoring me. Because she's been told to. Playing on the playground 
ignoring me because she's been told to. And she's standing right there as the people that are watching her are telling her, Daddy, you can't pick her up today. Did I do anything wrong? No. See, the agreement, the arrangement, is I pick her up when I get off work, bring her back to my place, hang out with her, until Shannon gets off work and drives her happy little butt down here to pick her up. No, no need for changes, no need for nothing. Shannon shouldn't have to text me every day and say, I'll be there between six and seven is normal. I don't care. You get here between six and seven, I don't care. Because if you're gonna be early, fine, send me a text and tell me you're gonna be early. You don't have to send me a text and say, I'm gonna be there at the same time today as always. And she doesn't have to send me a text every day, and around 10, 10 30. To, I mean, seriously, this is the arrangement, this is the agreement we had. I pick her up when I get off work, you pick her up here whenever you get off work. There's no need to text me to find out if that's what's going to happen. That's what the agreement was. That's what the arrangement was. <coughs> so you have my daughter sitting there being told she can't go with her daddy. Watching her daddy come to pick her up and watching her daddy walk away. Because he has no rights. Because, you know, the state of Ohio says, since we were never married, I have no rights until I take her to court. Which is kind of a bogus law, anyway. But whatever, it is, it's a law. So I have to abide. So I walked away. Don't you think that's psychological abuse? On my child? <laughs> you know, I got two scars on my arm from two years ago where Shannon had taken my phone from me, or wouldn't let me hear out my phone, wouldn't let me have my laptop, wouldn't let me have my lunchbox whenever I was trying to get to go to work. She ends up tugging or ripping a uh, bracelet off of my wrist and tugging on my uh, belt loops to try to prevent me from walking out the door. Why? I don't know. She ends up gouging, I mean, she, she put like almost seven scratches in me. Two of them turned into uh, scars. But she was just hugging so hard on my uh, belt loops and she daggone near broke two of them off. And I'm on my way, in my uniform, I'm on my way out the door. And I start walking to work because she, she won't give me my keys to my car either. So she stops me at every intersection in her vehicle, pulls up, and we just talk about this, let's just talk about this, blah, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. And I tell her if she wants to, if she wants to do something about it, go to my work and tell them why I'm going to be late. I had to have one of the officers go down to the store and pick me up a can of rub because my rub was in my car and, I had, and in my backpack, so I had none with me. So, then of course me, being the nice guy that I am, I dropped it in court because to be a domestic, she would lose her license to be a nurse. And where does that benefit my daughter? Does it benefit my daughter in any way for Shannon to lose her license? Does it benefit my daughter in any way for Shannon to have to go get a minimum wage job? No. So I dropped it in court. I probably shouldn't. Now last year when we split up, she pulled the same kind of crap where she had the daycare provider not let me get my daughter. For something stupid there again because I didn't call her or something stupid. You know, weaponizing your child just so that you can get your way. Just so that you can feel like you're in control. Now, let's, let's go to the reason why I told her I'm done with her this time, which is the same reason I told her I was done with her last time. But now, dumb me took her back. That's my fault. But I'm out there 
painting the shed using a sponge brush because that's all I had available to me because when she painted with the, the horsehair brushes, she left the paint in them and didn't clean them out when she was done. So they were all nasty and messed up. Well, I'm out there starting to paint, got the paint out, got shook up, got it all ready to go. Go to find my paintbrush and I don't have any. All I have is a sponge brush. Well, you know what, I've already got the paint poured, whatever. I'm just gonna use what's available to me. And she's out there yelling and screaming and carrying on about no person in their right mind would use a sponge brush to paint with. And I'm like, well, why do they make the sponge brush then? I mean, seriously. It's over in the painting aisle. Now, granted, in the past, I've only used sponge brushes to uh, put lacquer on or put uh, stain on. But this is what I had available to me without having to run to the bag on store and get a new brush. So that's what I was going to use. Why would I want to take an extra 10, 15 minutes to stop when I'm going, run to the daggone store, and get a brush? I have a brush. Is it the brush I want to use? No. But it's a brush. You know, and not to mention anything I ever did. I, you know, till in the gardens. Oh, no, it's not straight. You, oh, oh, it's not, no, it's not perfectly straight. No. They just need some weeds pulled. There's a video for that back there somewhere where I, I you know, took the uh, logs out of the yard, put them in the garden for and straighten up the garden by pulling the weeds. Yeah, it's a video a couple months back about that. But no matter what I did around the house, it was never good enough. If I trimmed the yard, she'd yell and scream because I got grass in the, in the mulch beds. Look, I may get a little bit of grass in the mulch beds, but the mulch beds are not green when I'm done. Whenever she trims, the mulch beds aren't green. You know, it doesn't matter what I did. I'm down there trying to power wash the basement wall so I can paint it and put dry lock on it so it can stop taking in water in the spring when it rains. And she wants to yell and scream that I can't start on that big room because she's got clothes on the floor that needs washed. And she doesn't want them to get wet. So I wait and I wait and I wait. Come springtime, they're still on the floor. And it rains. And they get soaking wet because, you know, the wall takes in some water. All in the clothes absorb it all. Instead of it going to the drain like it should, the clothes absorb it all. Then she wants to come up here and yell and scream at me because those clothes got wet. And I'm like, what do you think I was trying to do six months ago when I was trying to power wash the basement walls to get all the old paint and the old dirt off so I can get the dry lock put on? and seal the daggone basement up so that you don't get this little bit of water in the spring whenever it rains. I mean, great, seriously, the basement doesn't take on a whole lot of water. And it just barely trickles in. Dry lock on the inside would be plenty to get it to stop taking on water. Seriously, it was, it's not that much water. But when you got a ton of clothes on the floor, they soak it all up, and over the course of a week, they're going to get pretty daggone heavy. But you know, she doesn't want to listen to me six months before that to allow me to do what I was trying to do. No, she's got to stop me from doing what I want to do because she doesn't want it done that way. She wants it done differently. She wants me to wait until she gets the laundry done, but she never gets the laundry done. So her clothes get wet and it's my fault. Well, it shouldn't be. I was the one down there trying to fix the problem before they got wet. All you gotta do is pick them up off the bag on the floor, throw them in the wash, take them out of the wash, put them in the dryer, dry them, hang them up, get them out of there. She's been gone two months. You wanna know how many, how many clothes I have laying on the basement floor? None. Absolutely none. No, because when I wash my clothes, when I get enough for a load, I wash my clothes. I hang them up, and then they hang, and then I bring them up, and, you know, a little later. Now, granted, I still have some clothes down there hanging, but I'll bring them up whenever I feel like it. I don't have to bring them up that day. It's not hurting anybody but myself for having to walk down there and find a shirt if I want a shirt that's down there. It ain't hurting nobody but myself. <coughs> so, you got that. No matter what I did, never good enough. 
never. Yeah, in the other day, she's she's going on and on and on about something. And I tried to explain to her, you know, this is why we're not together. It's because you treated me like crap. And I always said, no matter what I did, it's never good enough. No matter what I did. And she wants to act like I'm talking about a text that she said that day. And I'm thinking, are you, are you mental? Can you correlate this as to, this is my problem with you? And, and have enough mental fortitude to go, oh yeah, I remember doing that, just doing exactly that in May and in June. And we'll take Father's Day for example. I stayed, I stayed up all night at work trying to get stuff done the night before Father's Day. Now, granted, I was there the weekend before, and of course she had to come in to hang out with me for like three hours and prevented me from doing any work. And then that night, the night before her Father's Day, she had to come in and hang out with me. Again, for another about three hours, again, preventing me from doing my work. So that's six hours in two weekends that I could have spent doing work. I got home around six o'clock. So if you take that six hours off of that that I wasted with her in there, not letting me do my work, if you take that six hours out of that, I could have been done by midnight. And then I could have been home in bed. But no, when I get home at six o'clock, she wakes up and she wants to yell and scream at me because I was out all night. Okay, fine and dandy. I told you I was staying until I got the dog. You know, I'd have been home three hours earlier had you not come in last night. And six hours earlier had you not come in the weekend before. And I shouldn't have let you come in. I should have just said, no, I need to get stuff done. That's why I'm here. You think I like wasting my time? No, I don't. So, she wants to yell and scream about how she had a whole day planned for me and now I'm going to spend the whole day sleeping. Oh, what are you going to do? Sleep all day? What are you going to do? Sleep all day? Well, if you just shut up, I can go to sleep and get a couple hours of sleep. So, like I said, I got home at like 6 o'clock. I think it was 9 o'clock before she shut her mouth. So, that's three hours of her running her daggone mouth preventing me from sleeping saying that she had plans for me all day long. She had a whole day planned for me. I'm like, oh yeah, really? What? Well, I had reservations. Come on. If you had reservations, they'd have been for, what, five, six o'clock in the afternoon. I had plenty of time to sleep. Had you shut your mouth when I got home? I could have slept till noon. Been up and wide awake. That's six hours. I probably could have been up by 10. But no, you can't shut your mouth long enough to let anyone do anything because everything has to be done exactly the way you want it. So when I don't reply to you and I don't call you at 9.30 or 9.15 or whatever time it was, you text me and tell me to call you. I'm sorry, I was laying down to sleep. And when I don't get your text all day long, don't you think I've always had a problem with remembering to refill my phone? I've always had a problem with that. I mean, it's usually a day, usually around noon or one o'clock, sometime whenever I think, oh yeah, my phone's not going off. Wonder why. But I've become accustomed to my phone not going off because you're not there to constantly make it go off. So, you know, I checked it. I think I checked it at one o'clock and was like, huh, that's kind of odd. I haven't received a text all day. Didn't think anything of it though. I just thought you was pissed because I didn't call you last night. Until I tried to send a text to a friend. Then I was like, oh yeah. Oops, it won't go through. Oops, I guess I forgot to put more time on my phone. Not a big deal. I just put that on my phone. And for that, I'm not allowed to see my daughter. So there you are, Shannon. You want to play piddly, piddly little games? I'll play piddly little games. And I should pull up some of the old videos of you standing out in the yard yelling and screaming at me. 
And I should have put those up here. Now, I'm not asking for much. I just want a public apology. A public apology for the way you treated me. I don't care, you can do it on Facebook. And I might just tag uh, the daycare provider in this little video. Because they facilitated you weaponizing my daughter. You ask me, this is all child abuse, is what it is. You don't get your way with me, so I can't see my daughter. Ain't that some bull crap? That's bull crap. Anyway, I've ran one long enough. I got a heck of a lot of editing to do to get this video up tonight. And I'll probably text it to you so that way you can watch it. Bye!